Since 2014 in the East End of London, Tower Hamlets Council has successfully recovered 28 properties as a result of fraud-related investigations. You're going to go back on the slide? Amy Sictoness and her daughter Lucia were on the social housing waiting list for three years and applied for more than 200 properties before finally getting a two-bedroom flat. Hi, Lucia. Hi. Say hello. Hi. Hi. So what have we got here then? So this is my two bedroom flat. Yeah. And here this is the living room. That's nice and bright and big, isn't it? It is a really nice size. So tell me about your situation before you moved into this property. Where were you living? I was just living over the road with my mum in an up for two bedroom flat. My mum and my twin sister. And also me and my twin, we shared a room. Amy desperately needed a place of her own. But she had no choice but to wait. <laughs> Just one room, you've got like the baby's cot in there, obviously, like mine and my sister's bed, all the baby's stuff. It's funny because one little person just takes up so much room. Yeah. It's mad. It's very overcrowded. And I think it must be very stressful for my sister as well. A privately rented two bedroom flat in this area can cost over £2,200 per month, well beyond Amy's price range. Reluctantly, she turned to the council for help. I went down to the council and I didn't put my name on their housing list. And um, I was bidding for about three, four years. Three or four years? Yeah, I bidded on over 200 places before I got to view this one. Did you lose heart at any point? I did get to view some properties and that, but obviously people was always in front of me. And obviously they accepted it. So, and every time I'd feel gutted, I used to like, I'd be like the third person that gets refusal on it. And I'd get to go and view the properties, you know, you just stand there thinking, please don't accept it, please don't accept mm -hmm. it, so I can have it. And I'd walk home, I'd ring my mum and I'd cry, I'd be like, I didn't get it again. For Amy's mum, Julie, it was also crucial that her daughter and granddaughter were able to live close by. How would you have felt if, you know, Amy had been given a property or offered a property that wasn't so close to you? That, that actually would have upset me because, you know, as I say, we've always been close. And from when Lucia was born, they was living with me. So I got to see her first, you know, steps kind of thing. Um, and then for her to have sort of moved out, I would have been concerned about it because, but, you know, I'm on hand if anything happens. You know, I'm always sort of, I can be, you know, I can be there in five minutes kind mm. of thing. And she was living out of the borough with no family. You know, what, what would she do? What That's would she it. do being on her own? But in November 2015, Tower Hamlets Council held an amnesty to encourage tenancy cheats to hand back keys without consequence or risk of court action. They got back properties worth £13 million. Amy's was one of the first flats they recovered. Couldn't have been happier, especially just when it said um, a two bedroom as well for all my Christmases had come at once. The fact that I did get it just shows me that there is hope because there's a lot of people that's in the same situation that I was and obviously losing hope and that sort of thing is horrible. So just fingers crossed they carry on with what they're doing and other people do get offered properties like this as well. When um, Amy got the, the letter for this property, how did you feel? Could not believe it. I'm really excited, really, as I say, you know, never wanted her to leave home kind of thing, but so excited that she had got her own home and the fact that it was so close. We already knew this estate because my sister had lived at the block at the end. My great nan had lived on this estate when it first opened, say, you know, five minutes from me. It was really exciting that she was getting her own home and sort of starting off on her own kind of thing, you know, creating her own sort of new little life with her little family. Amy's family have been in the area for generations and bringing up a young child, it's important for her to have a support network close by. But this isn't always possible. The number of homeless families being relocated outside London has increased fivefold in the last decade. And now you've got your own place. Yeah. What a difference has this place made to your life? Well, obviously it's just over the road from my mum. I've got a lot of support. It's just over the road from my mum's sister. I've always grown up in Bethnal Green. My mum, even like my nan, my granddad, their nans and granddads, we've all been born and bred in Bethnal Green. 
So it's all we know. So if I would have had to have moved out, I would have been lost. So that's why this area in terms of finding, you know, a suitable council property is so important to you. Yeah, definitely. Even when then like Lucia goes to nursery, my mum will be able to help because obviously then I'll go back to work. And talking about work, obviously, that's important to you, isn't it? You've got a, a really strong work ethic, and it's important to you to show your daughter that as well. As yeah, she definitely. I've always worked. I like working. This, can't sit at home all day bored, you know what I mean? I worked right up until three weeks before I had Lucia. So once Lucia's two, she'll go to nursery, and I'll definitely get myself back into work. And is that something that when you got this property, you were thinking, yes, now this gives me a base in order to kind of carry on with my future and, you know, think yeah. about those types of things? Yeah, definitely. But when, obviously, like, I started a family sort of thing, you do think about, obviously, once she grows up, she goes to school, you go out to work in the morning, that sort of thing. It's like, how am I going to do all that happily from one woman, my mum's? Do you know what I mean? It's nice to have your own house. It's yes. all about growing up in a way, ain't it? With a family supporting her, Amy's looking to return to work as soon as possible. Amy's story shows how social housing can have a real positive impact, not just on individuals, but on entire families. And it's stories like this that motivate housing investigators as they continue in their fight to crack down on tenancy fraud.